What is going on everyone? It is Foul Play here and we're back again for another Modern League. Um, so I decided to pick back up my little black-white control deck that I played a couple of weeks ago again. Um, I think I had like relative success with it. Things that I didn't really like about it was the smallpox was like sort of hard to cast if I had like a creature on the board like the Gurmorg Angler here. Um, so... I initially discarded Blood Gas because I didn't think it was going to be very good. But I think in conjunction with, like, Smallpox late game, uh, it will probably make things a little bit easier. That, and it's, like, really good against board wipes and things like that. It's a pretty reasonable, aggressive creature. Um, I've also made the addition of Gideon, ally of Zendikar over here. Um, so, obviously, he's got... An emblem where you can come in at four loyalty and then he can go ahead and he can uh, negative uh, four to give an emblem an uninteractable emblem where uh, creatures I control get one one which is pretty darn good what is this absolute rubbish go away <clears throat> okay um, so outside of uh, blood ghast and smallpox uh, and Liliana being the sort of core there, we've got of course the Stoneforge Mystic package with the Sword of Fire and Ice, the Sword of Feast and Famine, and the Batter Skull. So your typical good enchantments there. We have a discard package of five discard spells between Ioc and Thoughtseize. We have five removal spells between Path and Fatal Push. We also have the two Collective Brutality in there, which uh, sort of do both. Uh, over on the sideboard. Uh, we've got two Stony Silence. I wasn't seeing, like, that much... That much, um... That many artifact decks recently, so I've sort of gone down on that a little bit. We've got Plague Engineer for, like, creature tribal matchups. Um, Languish for board swarm matchups. Kaya's Guile for creature and burn matchups. Damping Sphere for Tron and Storm. And Leyline of the Void for graveyard-based strategies. Um, and yeah, just... So, for those of you uh, that don't know, real quick, uh, with Smallpox, each player loses a card, discards a card, sacrifices a land, and uh, loses one life, sorry, not loses a card. Um, yeah, so what will happen is, if you've got Flagstones of Trakar, if this goes to the graveyard from the battlefield, you can search for your library for a planes and put it onto the battlefield tap. So, you can actually Smallpox on turns two uh, with Flagstones on the field. If you have Urborg, because Urborg will allow any other any land to also tap for Swamp. Excuse me. Um, nice deck. Yeah, thanks, Pay. How you doing, man? How's your day been going? A little bit different to what I normally run, but uh, yeah, pretty keen. I'm just about done with the deck tech, so I'm going to jump into it. Any challenges or anything starting up anytime soon? No, not really. Okie dokie. Alright, so here we are for match number one. Um, we don't have a smallpox in hand. We're versing a Lurus deck with a Fatal Push and a Stoneforge Mystic. I think this is reasonable to keep. Could be Hammer Time, could be Bogles, if they're anything like me. <clears throat> in fact. Hmm. Is this like the human stack? I'm unsure. Uh, let's blood stain Mire and pass it to our opponent. What about your day? Uh, yeah, it wasn't too bad, thank you. I it is in fact. I I just had work, which is obviously uh, never the most exciting thing in the world. Double infect creature to the board. All right. Uh, um, and yeah, I was sort of like training some new staff members up on various bits and pieces um, around the place, and yeah, it all went pretty well. Um, I think we probably want to get 
Stoneforge Mystic onto the battlefield. Because if we get Sword of Fire and Ice, we can start shooting their stuff down. Uh, Blood Gas doesn't seem high enough value to me. <clears throat> Unfortunately, I sort of need removal spells and we really had one in hand. It's like a little land heavy for in fact. I can just trade this with the elf potentially. Z just got scale up plus a massive effect. Okay. Okay, uh, we've got triple Urborg in hand. Uh, <laughs> it's a bit amusing. That's not the half of the combo we want. Alright, so. Infect with Lurus. Fun times. These, like, opponent sacks creatures effects aren't super amazing, in my opinion, here. Uh, just because a lot of the time they're going to be sacking... Sacking like a Noble Hierarch or something instead. I do like Plague Engineer though. Plague Engineer looks fantastic. Language also looks very good. It's like maybe a little bit slow, but it's also extremely good. Kai's Girl does actually make a flying blocker though, which is interesting. Although we're on the play, so Smallpox is maybe a little bit better. So I like all my one mana stuff. I like my removal. I like my discard. Uh, collective Brutality. I can get instants and sorcery, so I can get removal spells. So that's sort of fine. Sort of Feast and Famine, just a bit weak, probably. Battle Skull will be alright if we get it online. Gurmog Angler might be a bit slow. Kai's Guile is pretty expensive. The life gain isn't that relevant. Mm. Blood Gas doesn't really block very well here. Ah, uh, let's take out a couple of Bloodgast. I'm not entirely sure what's 100% correct here. This is only my second leg with the deck. And it's like, I guess a deck that we made as well, as opposed to just a net deck. <clears throat> my nose is like very itchy at the moment. Quite bizarre. All right, well, uh, that's not going to cut it. So we got double discard, and we're one land off of having Plague Engineer do stuff. Uh, seems reasonable enough to me. I'll be keeping this one. Uh, Bloodgast definitely seems like the worst card here, although... Yeah, no, I think discarding Bloodgast is fine. All right, the fun begins. Let's take the elf. We don't really have much to do this turn. We can attack their hand again. Uh, maybe take like a ground swell. I think we can wait a little bit longer before we commit that. Drawing an extra discard spell there is not the greatest. I'd prefer some sort of action. Perfect. 
All right, let's go for Inquisition then. Hmm. Okay. We just dead at this point. Uh, not quite. We're getting close though. Ah, they put Lurus to hand. That is fine by me. Yes. Oh my god, yes. Alright, so what do we want to do here? We can get rid of Lurus, and then they don't have a creature. Um, I think it's just safe enough to go Plague Engineer and name Ink Moth. And then they can't ever activate without it dying, and then they have to try and kill us on normal damage. Um, then we can slowly put Sword of Fire and Ice down. Uh, so name Blink Moth, which is the creature typing on Ink Moth Nexus. Alright, pass it over. Temple Garden. Mm-hmm. Elf from the grave, all right. So there's like one unknown card in hand. And I really wish we uh, had this lingering souls in the grave. This is so awkward. Not not curving out on mana as well as like extremely awkward too. Force of vigor for my opponent? Nah, that's awkward. I don't know, maybe I don't have to be so aggressive there. His land's getting kinda high though. Um so like a fetch land. And he can pretty much just become immense, etc. Finds Pendlehaven. I'm really happy just taking one in fact, that's fine. Probably pump it to two with the Pendlehaven. Cool. So now I like just dodging distortion distortion strike. Uh collective brutality. Finally, that's a card. That is a card and a half. Mm. We got Sword of Fire and Ice down. We're getting closer to attacking their creatures. Lingering Souls just puts up blockers. Uh, he's got two, three, uh, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So he's got eight. So he's got enough to potentially kill me. All right, souls it is, and we'll just block him out. You wouldn't think with like 23 land it would be this hard to curve out, but I guess it's fine.
Uh, we'll just take the normal damage. I'm not concerned about his health at the moment. Uh, we're not in a like very good position to attack it anyway. Thank you. Oh, we're still like mana away from casting it though. That's really annoying. So the problem is, if we go in on Sword of Fire and Ice, Force and Vigor can just shoot it down. We don't really have that many good lines though. Um... I think we escalate two modes on the Brutality. Uh, we give Neg 2 and strip an instant or sorcery from our opponent's hand. So opponent, we'll go after Lurus. Okay, da, da, da. Discard the sword. Regrettably. Maybe, actually, maybe we can discard Gideon there and then sword is all of a sudden online. He's going to spend his mutagenic growth here, which is fine. Sure. So this is essentially stripping two instants out of my opponent's hand. I think we... Problem is, if we lose Plague Engineer, this Ink Moth Nexus is so savage. Um... Alright, let's continue to roll uh, the damage here at this point. We still have Lingering Souls to flash back. That's pretty shit at this point, honestly. It's not what we're looking for. If we can hit our fourth mana, that'll help a lot. Gideon, and then we can emblem the Gideon. Give our souls tokens a lot more oomph. I think we just take it this turn. He's drawn two extra cards. If they're both pump spells, we're dead. Are they really both pump spells? Okay. Um, cool. Well, GG. He's just going on normal damage. Ah, Plague Engineer next card. Well, that's... Alright, I don't think we played that the best, but also... Our hand was extremely awkward. We did not curve out, or get even close to curving out. Um... I think, like, sort of a grindy-ish deck like this is going to struggle against... Something as hyper aggressive as affinity. But I'm not gonna sit there and defend and say that I played that perfectly. Hey uh more ninety six, thanks so much for the follow. I'm glad thanks for stopping by. I'm glad you're enjoying the content so far. Alright. So you are for match number two. Twenty three lands, huh? Okay. Okay, calm down, deck. It's a bit better. We actually have our mana. If we get rid of the Gideon, we're looking pretty all right. Do we dare get rid of mana after last game? Probably not. <clears throat> hey, Latero, how you doing? Welcome back, Ben. Oh, is this Storm? 
I smell a storm matchup right now. Let's have a gander. Oh, it's prowess. Okay. Well, if we take their only creature, that's got to be reasonable for us. Buddy Lava Dart. How do we deal with that card? Yikes. See how many of these Manamorphos they're going to fire off this turn. I wouldn't be surprised if they kept one in their hand. If they just draw the, like, Stormwing... Um, of course they're going to play the Stormwing and we're going to be crying, but you never know, they might get unlucky. Uh, good news is for this matchup in the sideboard, we've got these Kai's Guile. They're going to be great. Um, I don't really think Leyline of the Void is going to be worth it. Double green off Manamorphos? I guess that would never... That's odd. That's very odd. Maybe Sphere 2? Uh, yeah, possibly, actually. Um, I definitely don't hate it. Alright, so just play... I guess we could play a Bloodstained Mai there, and end of turn, get, uh, get Godless Shrine intapped, we do have one basic planes in the deck here, so if there's a circumstance where we need double white, we might be taking two more damage than what we needed to with this line. Alright, good old Lily. And this is gonna eat a Lava Dart. I'm pretty sure. Uh, I don't really see a world where I'm plussing here, I don't think. Just deal with their creature and get on with it. Worth, yep. Yeah, I hear... I hear you, Ladder. I hear you. Be interesting to see if he fires it off this turn. He does. Okay. Alright, so no known cards in my opponent's hand anymore. They've all been played. Alright, so that's the exact sort of circumstance I was talking about. Uh, I'm going to conserve life and just uh, maybe Gideon next turn or something. Um, we're at 19, so we could probably be a bit flexible, but I don't really want to just let the game go pear-shaped, so... Yeah, because this, this could have been uh, Marsh Flats and we could have been fetching our one-off planes. In which case, it's a really good time to put Gideon onto the battlefield, I feel. But it's okay. Question is, when he comes down, do we want to, like, emblem, just get tokens? Tokens are probably fine. Swiss Spear. Alright, all of a sudden, it's looking even worse. Alright, how many burn effects has our opponent got? None so far. We should also uh, note they only have one mountain to sack to Lava Darts. Push and Gideon would be bomb? Yeah. I would definitely be a fan. I haven't updated my deck list, have I? Let me um, update my stream decker as well. Alright, so... I kind of like the idea of just go, going sort of Feast and Famine, uh, and then we can, of course, untap all our lands after we attack. They can, unfortunately, shoot our creature in response to the equip. Alright. 
So the Stream Decker should be updated now. Sorry about that. Opponent concedes. Sweet. Uh, maybe flashback and wait a turn. Um, I don't know. Um, no, I think it's worthwhile. If he wants to spend his burn spells there, our life total is really high. It's just we we wanna we wanna discard the cards from his hand, but I think we were like in a ninety percent to win no matter what we did sort of situation there. Okay. All right. Oh, geez, that was special. Uh, I really like Kai's Guile. Uh, sort of Fire and Ice seems a little bit weak in my opinion. Gideon doesn't seem amazing. Smallpox is so good here. Yeah, I don't mind it at all. Imagine getting rid of our opponent's mountains before they can get rid of their mountains. Uh, Thought Seize has got to be a card that you'd consider to take out in a matchup like this. Brutality is good. Uh, Bloodgast doesn't block, but it's good with Smallpox, so... Yeah. Yeah, I don't really love Gideon here. Let's go with this. It's like just way too slow. Um, no interaction to turn three is not going to be good enough. All right, now this is the bomb. Uh, we get rid of Batter Skull, and then this hand is just gas. Bomb.com, yeah. We're redefining bomb right now, mate. <laughs> the definition has been changed. Uh... Oh my god, we are one swamp away from doing something beautiful. Hey, look, a Sprite Dragon. Uh, I don't really think we care about Kozilek's return in the grand scheme of things. Take that guy. Pass the turn. <laughs> we can get it later with uh, Brutality anyway. I don't think we're under any sort of pressure to do anything this turn. I'm happy playing this one patient. Uh, there's an opt. Sure. So he opts to the bottom. Alright, some big decisions on what they're doing with their scry here by the looks of things. This is why you love Urzov. First modern deck was black-white tokens. Want to build it again, Lo? I mean, yeah, black-white tokens is obviously very strong in a lot of scenarios. Uh, looks like my opponent lost and regained connection to the game. Uh, but there was that mono-white token list that went around a while ago that was like very, very strong as well. Probably... Was that like six months or a year ago? It's definitely a deck. For modern? Yeah, absolutely. I'll see if I can find a deck list for you. Um... Actually, I think I could do one better. I'm pretty sure Nick did like a, a pretty big breakdown video on it. Anything but Soul Sisters? Oh god, please no. Alright, there we go. Alright. Here you go, ladder. I 
I guess I might as well uh, pull that up on screen for everyone because uh, the list because uh, the game's stalled out here. All right, old mate. This is like uh, this isn't a very good way to view it, is it now? Pull up our game again. I'll just look for a list. Oh wait, no, he's back. Alright, never mind. Okie dokie. But yeah, it's like really sweet. Uh, list. Stormwing Entity, sure. So opponent now gets to scry two. I wonder what their answer to smallpox here is. <laughs> oh no. Do we just like Kaya's girl instead of smallpox so we can get double value off our flags next turn? Or is that just getting like a bit greedy? Surely smallpox has to be better the longer the game goes on, right? Uh, Alright, let's smallpox. Discard a card. Flagstone seems sort of redundant at this point. The, the really sweet part about the list is the, I think it's the vetted Loxodon or whatever it's called, um, which convokes off all the tokens and then anthems all the tokens. It's like really cool tech. Uh, all right, looks like my opponent discarded a Bloodstained Mire. Here comes the Sprite Dragon. All right, and we're getting attacked for one. Oh my god. Pass to the opponent, uh, and hold up Kaisgar. Probably one of the most powerful cards in modern. Oh, sure. So, uh, these, these like, triggers on the Sprite Dragon are permanent. They're not like Prowess. They don't fall off at the end of the turn. So, it's not like he's wasting anything here, uh, really. I'm just gonna, like, chill and wait until he goes for attacks and... shoot off my thing. Guys, go OP. Alright, so choose two. Each opponent sacks a creature. You gain four life. And we can't escalate yet, but that's fine. So, boop, boop, boop. Soul Scout Mage, wow. Opponent keeps drawing the gas here. Interesting. Is Liliana of the Veil surplus a requirement here? Because I can Brutality plus Mystic. I think we Brutality and Escalate. So, Escalate two modes. So we'll go 2-2 two, two and look at our opponent's hand. We want to clear the way for the Stoneforge Mystic here. Alright, so 
If we get rid of Lava Dart here, we temporarily protect our Stoneforge Mystic from being uh, destroyed. <laughs> he needs to draw another burn effect. But either way, this Batiscal looks pretty juicy. Alright, and then next turn we can attack with Mutavolt, hold up Stoneforge Mystic active. And then have a Batiscal online and hold up mana just to bounce it to hand. So, uh, it's taken a few turns, but we're... This is my opponent's turn 6. But we're finally in a spot where we have, like, pretty hardcore stabilized here. Sure. Alright, so opponent drew land and blew off his Kozilex. That's fine. Mutavolt, swing. Have you ever seen a healthier life total on turn 7 versus prowess? Opponent concedes. Alright, good team. Well, that was slow and infuriating, but uh, we did it. Alright. So, welcome back for match number three. Uh, we lost the die roll, and we are on the draw. Uh, we're versing Andreas No, or Noi. Uh, we've got this hand that looks pretty slow and crappy, so let's go ahead and mulligan it. What was my first deck? My first modern deck? Um, it was actually humans. It was a list called Stupid Human Tricks. And it it was pretty decent. Uh, it was like a budget deck because I didn't want to spend a whole bunch of money to get into modern. Um, but it wasn't like the most powerful. It's not anything near like the humans deck we know today. Um, Oh, we're versing a prowess deck here. Um, or just Boros. Boros burn. Not a bad land, but we don't have the Urborg to chain with smallpox here. Let's just play our Bloodstained Maya tapped and pass the turn. Yeah, so this is essentially the first deck I had. It had uh, creatures like Boros Elite, Burning Tree Emissary, Champion of the Parish, Dark Confident, uh, Lightning Mauler that actually soul bonds for haste, which is kind of cool. Good synergy with the Burning Tree. Mayor of Avonbrook, Lightning, uh, Lightning Mauler, Rip Clan Clasher, which is haste 2 2, and Soldier of the Pantheon. Normal Thalia. I also had a uh, list. I also had a list which um, I had one Dark Confident in my list. There was a list that ran more. Zealous Persecution is really cool and good tech. Uh, it's pretty like underplayed and underrated card in modern. My second deck was Merfolk, and then my third deck. was the four colored gifts using fate stitcher when dig through time and stuff were live what about you pay what was your first deck um, i don't like taking damage here but i don't like my opponent continually going ham here your first deck was walls oh god jeez that's crazy It can't be right shocking in here. That just cannot be right. Alright. Let's just conserve. And maybe hope. <laughs> hope pretty darn hard. If we live here, we could still, like, get a Brutality and then be in a really good spot. Hey, look, a Fatal Push. That's actually a good one. You won your first FNM with it? As in, like, the entire FNM you came first? That's wicked, man. Well done. I 
I really don't like this like non-targeted discard. I think we mutavolt block and hold up fatal push. Although that's that doesn't work either. Um, it was a walls mirror match. Wow, out doing the season pro on your first night. That's not bad. All right, let's. Now that I've completely stuffed up what land I've played, I th I'm pretty sure the right line is to smallpox here. I I really don't like doing this. Discard lingering souls. Okay. I should be playing the flagstones here. Remember building a wolves deck too. <laughs> oh, no one's expecting a deck like this. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. So opponent uh, sack discarded searing blaze. Okay. Maybe they're clogged up on searing blaze and can't do anything here. Guess we're at their mercy either way. Rip. Alright, just double bolt and we're dead. Okay. Alright, well we had like... Very little of what's good against them, right? Alright, so... Here, we have got our friend. Our friend is Kai's Guile. Um, Kai's Guile is coming in. Thought says it is not our friend. I don't really think we care about Languish or anything, and then we just need to take something out. Gideon might be a bit slow and clunky and crappy and things like that. Um, sort of Feast and Famine's another consideration. Gideon does give me potentially a win condition. Feast and Famine probably just doesn't do very much. I don't really like Damping Sphere in this spot. Alright, so now we're on the play. Uh, we got a hand with Fatal Push and Stoneforge Mystic. We already have the Batter Skull in hand. So, note, we won't be fetching out an artifact with our second Stoneforge Mystic. So, opponent also Mulligan to six here. Rift Bolt suspended. Oh my god. Hello, baby. So I expect them to go after the Stoneforge Mystic here to deny the Batter Skull. Maybe they have the Artifact Hate though. Alright, they do go after Stoneforge. Eidolon of the Great Revel. How much do we care about Eidolon? Um, I don't think enough. I think we just hold up Kai's Guile, gain life, make him sack. Maybe they go for a haste creature and take an extra two damage in the process. Actually, this is kind of wrong. If they're holding up Skullcrack, I have my life gain denied. I think I'm going to go for Fatal Push here. I don't want to lose my Kai's Guile life gain. This is extremely mana inefficient, but... And if he's playing a, an Eidolon second main, we lose out here. No, lol. You legit only had walls. Didn't know how to build a deck. All right, okay.
All right, well, that's not too bad. Let's commit our Stoneforge Mystic, hold up Path to Exile. And short of Boris Charm plus Triple Spell, we shouldn't be dead. <laughs> All right, going after the stone forge again. That's a card, but I don't really think we want to play it. Hmm. All right, time to Bloodgust. Pass the turn. Opponent down to only two cards in hand now after drawing their second. Unlock the Great Revel, not a bad draw. Not a bad draw. All right, we just win at this point. We just win. Wait, opponent's not attacking? That's very odd. Uh, Alright, so... Let's make our opponent sacrifice a creature and we'll gain full life. That just resolves. Sweet. Second deck with Slivers. Oh, Slivers is, um... Slivers is actually almost a real deck at the moment, right? <laughs> so yes, you're a bad person. Since when were Slivers the bad guys? Come on. Slivers were just the janky guys. The bad guy has always been Tron. Uh, so here I think we just gain four life and make a 1-1 token. We don't really care about our opponent's graveyard. And I'm going to do this now. Because um, I don't think they had Skullcrack with how they just yielded through the turn. Prior, previously, opponent concedes to second Kai's Guile. Alright, cool. They've seen enough. That puts us at 2 and one Alright, so... Okay, match 3, game 3 here. Um, we got Kai's Guile. Bloodgast isn't amazing. I think this is overall fine. We want to Inquisition turn 1 in case they have Idol on the Great Revel. Oh my god. We did it. We drew the Urborg. We have the Urborg. That's really good for us. Wow, Path Lightning Bolt? Are you kidding me? All right, we'll take the Lightning Bolt. That is a terrible hand. What did they mull to? They kept a 7 that had triple land. Odd. All right, we'll just play out our blood gas past the turn. Probably the worst guard card to try and lightning bolt. Use lightning bolt in face. Sure. I actually wouldn't. Um, I actually wouldn't mind playing uh, the slivers deck on a future stream. I was gonna do up a list tonight and play it, but. Then I ran out of time between work and now, so can't do that anymore. I might just, uh, I'll see what I feel like after this. Why not thinning our deck? Go team. Uh, 
Uh, let's just go for Lingering Souls here. It seems fine to me. <laughs> Planet Cracking. All right, all right. So they're just cycling, they're looking for some action. They've drawn two new cards since last turn. All right, so we'll play our second flagstones, sucking the first one, getting shrine in tapped. Then we will flash back the souls from the graveyard, attack for two, hold up Kai's Guile. Getting in. And I don't want to play this Kai's Guile until my opponent sort of taps out and doesn't hold up skull crack anymore um searing blaze sure might go for a end step here we know one card in hand is uh sacred foundry so we want a 1-1 one, one spirit and gain full life. Sure. Do, do, do. They got the skull crack. Wow, they had the skull crack. All right, we just got uh, blown out for being impatient. I really didn't think they were going to have it then. Uh, skull shambling event, excellent draw. One sacred foundry in hand for our opponent. Goblin Guide. Oh, hello. So we can now filter our draw with the Marsh Flats here. Fatal Push on top. Uh, not sure if we want that. So the last card in our opponent's hand is the Sacred Foundry. Uh, we can start attacking with Shambling Vents now. Uh, this one gets dismissed. Opponent concedes. Sweet. All right. Getting there. Two and one. That was very quick. Pygonti. So here we are for match number four versus Pygonti. Uh, and we obviously lost the die roll this time, so that means we're going to be on the draw. Hand-wise, we can't really cast this Bloodgast. We can't really fuel the graveyard. I think this is too awkward to keep. Mill. Uh, it says, yeah, my opponent was last seen playing Mill. Maybe Gurmog Angler is good if we're versing a Mill deck. Um, I think we could probably see a better hand, but all right, one lander with Gurmog double pox. Pox has got to be good against Mill these days. This hand is so much better than the last one. I'm absolutely keeping. I'll get rid of the Gurmog angler. Blood gust. Has got better synergy with the smallpox. And with the brutality. Maybe I got rid of one smallpox. I don't know. It's hard to be like a crubble, double crab hand against these mill decks. Um, but like, I suppose if you have a lot of removal spells, you can. I sort of have... I have... Um, Three push, two path, two collector brutalities, and three Lilianas that would count as removal. Uh, so it's a decent amount. Oh, and smallpox as well, actually. I have a huge amount of removal. Never mind. Oh, oh, is my opponent on something else? This does not look very mill esque. Dredge. 
Well, that's a different type of mill. That's self mill. <laughs> if I open this deck list, are we going to see a mill list or are we going to see a... Uh... Oh, no, we, we actually see a mill list. Okay. Mm, well, obviously missing the land drop is bad. Uh, let's thought seize and try to take a cathartic reunion, I suppose. Double Ox, Life from the Loam. Oh god, Shriekhorn? I guess we take the Shriekhorn. <laughs> Gross. Watch him hit like a 5 mana dredger. They already hit an Ox. Oh my god. Oh, and a Life from the Loam. Damn it. Now they can Ox. They can turn to Ox off this hand now. Creeping Chill. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. I have some very good news, guys. You see these four Leyline of the Voids in the sideboard? They're in here for a reason. Um, we have the plan. If we get slapped around game one, we got the plan game two and three. Turn two Ox. Yep, okay. Right on time. I guess we can thought seize for information or something. I don't know. Triple loam. Amazing. Um, all right. Well, <laughs> that didn't go to plan. But as we're saying, we've got this. We have got this. Hello, my friends. I don't really... I've never really liked single targeted removal against Dredge. Maybe with this deck, Path might be reasonable, but with Bogles, I always sideboard it out. Fatal Push is obviously absolutely atrocious. I don't see too much in the sideboard. Maybe Kai's Guile. That doesn't seem amazing either, though. Plague Engineer can, like, stop Narco Meebers from... It. Entering essentially and that's about it your opponent is the first in 5-0 record. His name is very familiar to you. Oh, really? Really? Uh, where is this all hiding Giovanni? I'm not ver I'm versing Pi Gonti. Oh, he's second. He's second by one Okay I see. Uh, I can't imagine Liliana of the Veil is very good this matchup. Kaya's Girl gains us life. Sword of Feast and Famine doesn't seem at its best either. Neither does Fire and Ice, but at least it draws us a card. Um... I don't hate Gideon. Uh, let's get rid of a path sort. CMC. So we might not have much to do in the first couple of turn. In the first turn, it's essential that we sort of hit our second land drop, and from there we might be able to chill a little bit. Okay. Hey, look, we found them. <laughs> Uh, this isn't an automatic win, but we do have uh, Sword of Feast and Famine to equip to Blood Gas, so that probably is enough to get us there. Um, obviously, your opponent can just hard cast dredge creatures, so having just Graveyard Hate isn't always going to be good enough, and having just one piece of Graveyard Hate also isn't always going to be good enough um, because they can Nature's Claim it post board. I will see if they kept any in hand or sighted them in or not. I don't see any real reason why I would want double white here. So I think fetching just the swamp here to conserve life is fine.
Haggle. Alright, so we curve into our mana. Which I don't hate. Uh, we'll start off by attacking. So the problem with playing Sword of Feast and Famine here is if he has one Nature's Claim, he might go after my Ley Lines. It's more mana efficient. I think it's okay. And then if we don't draw a land, we can Thought Seize plus Sword next turn, like plus Act of the Sword onto the Blood Ghast. Opponent plays Merchant. Alright, let's get a look at his hand. Hey, Eggbeat. Uh, thanks for the raid, man. How's your stream? Welcome, everyone. Conflagrate Golgari Thug. So if we get rid of Golgari Thug, it's sort of gone forever. Conflagrate can hit our creature, and our creature can come back from land, though. It was good. Good misclicks uh, from, you, from you. Oh, that's unfortunate, man. Sorry to hear it. Alright, that doesn't have Death Touch or anything. Let's get rid of Conflagrate into Exile. It might just be worth leaving this land in hand. No, that doesn't work because we can play Gideon this turn. Hold on, we can like really turn up the heat here if we connect. Opponent discards a Shriek Horn. And here it comes. So we will zero the Gideon. And the pressure is on. <laughs> That's awesome. That's really awesome. Alright, opponent concedes. Sweet. Go team. Alright, anything we want to change here after seeing that? Actually, Languish is a good option in this matchup. If we get behind, it's a really good way to reset the board. Uh, I probably should have brought that in last match. I like that over Path. I don't... I don't know, like, Path can answer the Ox, which could be important. I'm not, like, in love with Kai's Guile, but it does... Gain us life, and this matchup, our life could get low. Collective Brutality also gains life, but not as much. Mm. I think we'll get rid of Sword of Fire and Ice on the draw. Maybe not. Maybe just one Stoneforge. If we're boarding in Languish, it's probably reasonable to get rid of. The really sweet thing about, like, Gideon as well is... And, and Gurmorgangler, are they creatures that uh, don't die to ang languish, which is really good for us. Um, Alright, so, Smallpox. We've got a creature we're not upset to discard to Smallpox. We've also got that, which we're not upset about. I mean... Stoneforge Mystic is decent. This is, like, decent in the blind, but considering what we're versing, we can probably look for something a little bit better. Like, turn... Th turn three, Batterskull on the draw doesn't really excite me. Opponent Mulligan to five. With a ley line? Well, yeah, anything with a ley line I'll keep, man. Opponent Mulls to four. All right, well, with him on four cards, maybe I'll keep this one. Get rid of this. Get rid of this. I don't think we can go any lower. I'm surprised we didn't hit a ley line in three hands in 21 cards. Another Shriek Horn for our opponent. 
Imagine if we just uh, turned over the rest in peace here. <clears throat> Alright, so that Narco Amoeba is not too bad. It's not getting back any prized amalgams. I'm definitely happy about that. Uh, they find a dredger. It's only dredge three. There's the blast zone. I'm not sure if blast zone's where he wants to be against us. Guess if he's concerned about swords or leyline, it might make sense. Takes a long way to long time to tick that up to get take care of leyline though. Uh, life from the loam. Get back some lands. Sure. So let's go two modes. Uh, we will drain life and we will look at our opponent's hand. And get rid of the blood ghast, which will come back if and when we get and play a land. All right, so we didn't really get very much there. Uh, I think they kept sort of the bare bones hand really. Hit Creeping Shield, Narco Amoeba. Okay, that's fine. It's correct to um, use the Urbog mana there on the Marsh Flats as well. So we guarantee Blood Gas back next turn. And we can also play the Stoneforge Mystic. Also, we can curve into our land, which is helpful because we might not. This point. Triple Narco Mooba, prized amalgam came back. We find the Batter Skull. Okay. So we need to get our white mana now. We can just get the basic. Trigger the Blood Ghast. Always yes. Welcome back, Blood Ghast. Welcome to the party. Might as well complete the uh, set. Mills Merchant, Scalding Tard, Stinkweed Imp. Getting back life from the loam. Sure, I'll take that. Technically, I should play that Swamp post-combat, but I don't think it's going to impact too negatively here. Hope not. Charge counter on Blast Zone. Sure. We're almost at enough mana where if we draw a Ley Line of the Void, we can hardcast it as well. Alright, so block prized amalgam seems pretty straightforward here. Gain a life. A neck victory for the team. Hardcast the Stinkweed Imp. Now, this has Death Touch, right? Yes. Land, land, land. Yeah, he's got all the lands. Okay, sweet. So what does that mean? Well, I think we are just in the business of... Not attacking, but pre-combating the sword. Yeah, I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. I misplayed. Um, my bad. I was thinking about getting the uh, blood gust back here, but now I'm going to give him like a dredge creature as well, which is obviously not very good. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know this game. 
I guess we might as well give this pro red now. So we protect it from conflagrate. Or lightning axe. So... Maybe it's okay what we did. Not really. Uh, they get an ox. Shit. We might be dead to creeping chills here off the ox. That's pretty terrifying, actually. He's only had one creeping chill so far. But like, we don't need to be in this spot because we can, we could be at 17 life now and completely safe if we played the Sword of Feast and Famine pre-combat and then we could have untapped and cast the Sword of Fire and Ice. Uh, we do have protection from the Ox and the Narco maybe, so we can't actually block this germ here. Double prized amalgam is fine. There's a conflagrate. All right, no creeping chills. Excellent. All right. Good, good, good. And we have, like, protection from every color of creature they've got. That's really sweet. I can't believe I was considering uh, taking some of these out. So he's gone for all of this instead of ticking up Blast Zone, which is relatively interesting to me. I think if he, like, gets Blast Zone on three, we might be in trouble, but just doesn't really matter because he's not gone for that line. If we pitch our Bloodgast to the graveyard here, um, we can cast Gurmore Gangler as well post-combat, which seems pretty worth it to me. It's a definite upgrade. What do we draw? Lingering Souls. Alright, this should be a pretty good spot. Uh, of course my opponent can hit Nature's Claim here and make our life hard. Um, but yeah, I guess, I guess we'll have to see what they can do. I'm sure they know their deck better than I do. You're on a very healthy life total. So let's say they have the worst case scenario of having a nature's claim in hand. Um, firstly, they'd gain three life and go to seven. Secondly, I would assume they're going after the batter skull, uh, which would leave us with a four-four germ with protection from colors. You see grudge? Oh, you're you're right. There's an ancient grudge in the grave. Shit. Oh, playing Gurmog is so bad. Was that was that milled this turn? Or was that in their last turn? Oh, we are boned. Maybe, maybe not. So if we keep Gurmorg Angler alive, we can kill them. Right now, this turn, okay. Well, I'm glad I didn't completely misplay. Uh, but I'm not very happy to see it at the same time. 
Oh, sorry. Nature's Claim would uh, make us gain four life, not our opponent. I'm talking out my butt as well. Um, I'm used to casting it, not having it cast on me. Okay, okay, okay. Is this instant speed or sorcery speed? Instant speed. So we just need to have enough protection from our opponent's creatures to kill them next turn. That's pretty important. Alright, he's just getting back two fetch lands and a mountain there. With the life from the line. It's fine because the germ doesn't die. He probably should kill a sword. I guess if he wants to guarantee blocking, he would go after one of the swords, right? This is actually a pretty, yeah, a pretty complicated board state. Hey, Eggbait. Hmm. There we go. Yeah, so like, the only card I can see an argument for, like, I don't think sh Stony Silence for Street Corn, particularly on the draw, is like ever anything that I'm getting behind. Like, we've got a Stoneforge Mystic boarded out here, and we've still got all our stuff on the field. Uh, not very often a Batiskel gets to keep the germ token once it's, uh, once the Batiskel's destroyed. That's exactly right. Are they going to try an instant speed? Ah, not bad. Interesting. Oh my god. Does this change anything? He's actually let us untap with Batiskull and Stoneforge Mystic up as well. So is the line attack with the germ? Do we want to spend mana pre-combat? But if we do that, then we can't untap things. What's how much damage has he got bought on the board at the moment? So he's got four on his narco meters. He's got another six there, so that's 10, 15. He's got 19 damage on board right now. Okay. Is there a world where I equip one of these swords onto anything else and attack? I don't really think so. I think it's just attack with the germ. Grudge going after Sword of Fire and Ice, so he's going to look to chump block with Narco Amoeba. I'm actually fine with that. Or is he going to trade the Ox into it as well? Ox is less good, but we can get rid of it. Maybe I want a life from uh, Leyliner there, actually. Um, I think we're pretty far ahead either way, though. Maybe. Yeah, Leyline there is probably right. Did my opponent board out Creeping Chills? I've only seen one. It's going up to three. They can also nature's claim their own shriek horn to gain life if they draw it. 
They're going on a dredge venture. Yeah, I think we were definitely supposed to get rid of the graveyard. I don't know why I didn't. I'm like very tired. I have not been sleeping well this week at all. Okay. What are we doing now? We're just popping on three? That will get rid of your prized amalgam, so you do that post attacks. Whoa, Conflagrate going downtown. Holy moly. All right, that's a bit scary. Uh, sheesh. So we're on 20 life. We have a lot of life. That is all fine. Has my opponent played a land this turn? No. We do not have to block. If we don't block, we take 11 damage. No cards in hand. Oh, no cards in hand. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think we just chump the prized amalgams then. I'm probably playing that wrong as well. It's probably get rid of Bloodgast, right? So now we're on 15. He's got 13. I definitely play. I'm playing this game so bad right now. All right, Lingering Souls. Is Lingering Souls better than Leyline of the Void? Um, well, he's got a Blast Zone on three. So probably not. Although, how do I win? If I take 13 damage next turn and go to 2, how am I winning without a creature on the board? That Conflagrate was not so. He's also got another Conflagrate in the grave. He can flash back. Alright, uh, but no cards in hand to flash back to it. Uh, I'm extremely confused on what to do here. Hell, life from the loam? Yeah, well, we can get that life from the loam back and more lands. I think if we blocked the blood gusts, we take two more damage, but then we take less damage next turn. Because um, we'd be on 13, but then we'd only be taking nine damage from 13, which would put us to four. Flashback souls, equip. I think we just took the wrong line. We're going to be dead to flying tokens, I'm sure. Maybe if we draw lands, we can Kai's Gale equip the token. Alright. Uh. Alright, well... Dead to Conflagrate off the top, or... Yeah, that's it. And still only dust in it if there's something else. And we need a land that comes into play untapped, so not... I think Kaya's this turn? I'm not sure, Pei. I don't... Because then he's got Conflagrate in the graveyard. He puts three cards to hand. Um... Oh, wait, wait. That doesn't... Oh, that doesn't exile his graveyard? Oh, my God. I got this so wrong. Okay, I'm just dead. Okay, I'm just dead. Damn it. I played this game so bad, man. So bad. Alright, so he knows. <laughs> At least I think he knows. He probably is casting life from the loam and then getting lands and then can flag right, right? Ox. Uh, I guess technically we're not dead if he doesn't realize. Anything from Ox gets straight put here, though. 
Uh, he's refilled his hand though, and now he can conflagrate. Okay. I just need him to actually cast it. All right, sure, that's fine. He's got us. All right, we could have won that, but we did terribly. Okay. All right. <laughs> Let's just get another burn deck and beat up on that, hey? I think everyone can agree there. With all these Kai's Giles in the sideboard, we have no trouble against burn. We've taken down burn and prowess, and we've lost to infect and dredge. All right, so here we are for match number five. We lost a die roll and are going to be on the draw. Opponent is keeping their seven, and this looks decent enough to me. I'll keep as well. The fishy. Uh, please no infect again. Don't tell me infect is alive again. I really don't want to see that crap. Oh, it's amulet titan. Uh, hello, smallpox off the top. <laughs> Sure, so... Double Valakul and Gruel Turf in hand. Not the best amulet hand I've ever seen. Dang, this feels like it's going to be rough. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> With a hand like that? Eh... <laughs> Or they could just top deck an amulet of vigor. <laughs> uh, discard doesn't do much in that spot, I'll tell you. All right, well, uh, I dare say we're probably going to want to get these Stoneforge Mystics down sooner rather than later. Or at least the first one down sooner rather than later. Get the batter skull. All right, he plays the Valakut. It enters untapped. That is his turn over. All right. So we know Gruel Turf, and there's an unknown. There's a chance here for us to. Potentially strip a card from his hand, but if it was anything cheap, he probably would have played it. Uh, this potential to hold up Path to Exile. Although not really. No, there's not a chance to hold up Path to Exile. So just play Shambling Vents and pass turn. So he's floating mana, he's bouncing the tall Aria West, he's going to look to get Summoner's Pact um, off the Transmute effect. And then he can use that to get a Summoner's Pact. Yeah, so then we can Ioc the Summoner's Pact next time, which is really sweet for us. Let us go down. All right, we'll get in there and Is there a difference between us going Flagstones or Urborg here? I don't really think so. And we'll just uh, bring on the hate with Stoneforge Mystic. I think we want to go Sword of Fire and Ice. I don't think we get much value from making him discard once he's already out of lands. We could get one land from his hand, potentially isn't the most amazing thing ever to me. So 
So sort of fire and ice down. Erbog down. Quip sort of fire and ice. Attack our opponent. Sure. I don't think we want to hastily like path this creature there. Maybe it's right, but I don't think so. All right, opponent concedes. Sweet. So he's going to be very upset when he sees the smallpox, but he might be able to assume that with flagstones and Urborg. Uh, I guess we'll find out soon. Is there anything we want here? Like damping sphere could be okay. Hytropixia, how are you going? The games are going okay. We're two and two. We played really badly last game against the second person on the leaderboard. Uh, and unfortunately lost. Sphere is a bomb. Damping sphere is a bomb. Okay, that's good to hear. How was your day, Tripixia? Did you get up to much today? You been prepping for your job work or like your new job or anything? I actually don't... Languish is an answer to our opponent's... Um, Dried of Lysian Grove, right? So I don't hate it. I'm not sure if I like Gideon, though. Gideon doesn't seem the best. Your oldest, you still wor use words like bomb? Lol. Dude, I'm 31. I think I'm classified as old as well. Uh, yeah, you did some onboarding for your job, and you went and hung out at the beach for a bit. Oh, the beach. How It was would have been a nice day for the beach, right? Hey, you're 31 as well. Snaps, man. Snaps. Hmm. So I think Stoneforge package is good. I don't think Collective Brutality is at its best here. You might be able to strip some Nature's Claims or Force of Vigors though. 26 over for pay. So I'm looking at potentially bringing in 4 cards. Surely Gideon's just got to be the uh, outright weakest card here. And I like maybe two Blood Gusts out. Removal is fine. Maybe I'll ditch like one Lingering Souls as well. Alright, go with that. All right, so what do we got here? We got a two lander that has access to only one land that taps for colors and pretty top end. Gross. This is a better two lander with the smallpox and the brutality. I think this is a keep. I actually think we get rid of brutality Maybe not. Yeah, I don't hugely like Brutality here. Eh. Alright, let's get rid of the Brutality. Opponent kept a 6. Good hand, wish it was a 7, yeah. I wish one of these lands came into play. Oh, both the lands came in untapped. Maybe we get some help off the top. Not yet, because I think we want to guarantee the smallpox. Over the Inquisition, but the Inquisition gets worse over time. Because we can still hold up Path as interaction if we don't get smallpox off on turn two. Alright, let's see what we're versing. Rumac Excavator? Oh man, the tech. The tech. <laughs> he uh, he knows. He knows. He saw the lands. He no he knows enough about what's going on here. <laughs> All right. So Talaria West out of hand. Marsh flats. Beautiful stuff. All right. This has got to hurt him worse than it hurts me, right? Or oh, wait. We would. We might want to wait until he commits to the board and then smallpox. We're in a position where we can go to Liliana Minus, get rid of Dryad. Alright, I like that. And then we can, after we get rid of... After we Liliana, we can Smallpox the turn after that. And he should be, like, super dead at that point. 
Misty Rainforest was land drawn this turn. Dried of Lysian Grove. You got it. Simic Growth Chamber. Sure. Bouncing Talaria West, maybe? Forest. Honest good magic for him? Yeah. For now, I think we're keeping him honest mostly. Alright, so we're going to have the Liliana going at him and the uh, Smallpox going at him as well. We might actually end up losing our path if we want to do everything next turn. Another Dryad of Lysian Grove. Does he play the forest? Our growth chamber is out of hand currently. He does play the forest. So Nelesnia, Sanctuary, Bouncing... Talaria West, alright. Cool. So we'll start with Liliana Plus, right? Oh, this is going to wreck him. Double smallpox. Jesus. Bloodgast. Goodbye. Smallpox. <coughs> Alright, so we'll discard our Marsh Flats. Although that will stop us from getting back our Bloodgast. I don't think it's the biggest issue at this point. Uh, maybe not. Maybe I'll get rid of Path, actually. I think if we, like, double hit their lands, we're probably in a good spot. Don't forget, he's got one card in hand, and it's Talaria West, so it's now gone. Sacrifice a land. Goodbye, swamp. You'd say path? Yeah. Alright, glad you're agreeing with me. So he can just tighten if we let him here. So I think we just crack the marsh flats and go for it again. Like, because Liliana is also a win condition here. All right, sweet. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> Primeval Titan in the bin. All right, we're doing it, team. <laughs> oh no, he's winning the land race now. Not bad. Yeah, we do. Welcome back, Bloodgast. He was thinking he'd draw Prime. Yeah. He's got to be pretty tilted at this point, I'd assume. Tyler's Tracker. That's not a bad draw for him. Alright, so straightforward little neg here. This costs three to activate, right? Yes, it does. Get in for two. <laughs> Boreal Grazer. Oh, right. right. Damn. Uh, well, at least that one does not uh, attack Liliana, right? Cool. Uh, not much point attacking there. So good. Yeah. Such a good draw. He's like so far away from... Because these now just tap for colorless, right? They can't tap for colored. <laughs> oh, super copy shambling, shambling vents. All right. At least one of us is hitting our lands. Although, uh, here we are hitting our lands. Sweet. Uh, let's plus. Uh, let's crack this bloodstain might. We can attack with the shambling vent now as well as the uh, blood gas. So we can actually get some damage in. Oh, they're holding a card in hand. Is it a prime time? Who's, who's keen to find out if it's a prime time or not? What do we got? 
What have we got? Oh, they're casting in response. What's going on here? Black, black, red. Oh, dismember? Oh, that's fine. Guess we might as well gain some life here. Uh, we're almost at a point where, like, Lily will ultimate as well. Bloodgast, welcome back. <laughs> You need white to activate the uh, vents, right? Yes, you do. You need both black and white. It's one of each. It's three mana. Get that nice, healthy life turtle gone. question is, are we, like, under any pressure to ultimate the Liliana? I wouldn't really say so. Dude. That's a good draw. Um, alright, so... I'll just go ahead and cast this. Plus the Liliana. Activate the Mutavolt. Oh, did he just lose a Dryad of Lysian Grove? He did too. Uh, I'm not sure why he didn't play Dryad of Lysian Grove in his turn, but sure. Maybe he didn't want to lose it to the Liliana ultimate. He has no green. Okay. Well, fair. Yeah, I guess uh, Damping Sphere stops him from going for colors. So we got the 3-2. That's really sweet. All right. Go team. Go team. Uh, all right. So what did we think about the deck? Uh, I definitely think there were inconsistent games with it. Uh, where sort of like some of your card combos didn't line up and it didn't go the best. See what we said when the card was a bomb? Yeah, Damping Sphere is the bomb. The biggest bomb over here. Loving it. Um, I feel like it still needs tuning both main deck and sideboard. I don't know if we need to look at the land base at all, possibly. Like, definitely Bloodgast felt okay. It's just... If you have like a Bloodgast hand, uh, if you if you have like Bloodgast or Lingering Souls in hand without Smallpox or Collective Brutality, it feels kind of bad. So maybe we need to go up on Collective Brutalities here. Um, maybe Liliana's just too top end. I don't know. Like she felt good and she was definitely a win condition that game. Bit odd. Anyway, deck was good. Uh, I'm going to move on to another deck now. 